Hello everyone! In this week's video, I'm going to show how to color hair digitally in Clip Studio Paint. So let's get started! You don't have to use the same colors as me, but if you want to, here are the RGB values. I changed the base coloring while coloring the hair, so here's what I end up using. If you click on this tab, you can enter the RGB values. I start by making a new layer. I make sure to put it under my line art folder, that way the coloring doesn't go over the line art. I double click the layer and name it base. I use the eyedropper tool to select the base color. Next I select the magic wand tool to help me fill in the hair. I make sure to have select additionally selected so I can select multiple areas at once. I also have area scaling set to 2, that way we don't get white pixels around the border. I also have the all layers option selected. That way the magic wand tool will select inside the line art. Once I have the area selected, I press the fill button. Next I make a new layer above the base layer for shadow 1. I make sure the new layer is selected and then click the clip at layer below button. This will make it so I can't color outside the base layer. Now let's talk about my brush settings. I have my brush customized so it gets pointed at the ends. This is really nice when coloring hair. To make the brush get pointed at the ends, we need to add these settings. First we need to click on this button. This window will pop up. We need to go to the starting and ending area. I make sure to have the eyes by these settings turned on. That way they will show up over here. Next I click on this. Press the check mark by all of the settings and set the minimum to zero. This will make it so the brush gets pointed at the ends. If I press the check mark by starting, the start of the brush stroke gets pointed. If I press the check mark by ending, the end will be pointed. Now we are ready to start coloring. Yay! <laughs> I start by setting the hardness to the lowest setting, that way the brush has a very soft edge. My screen recorder doesn't show the menu, but I click on this button then set the shadow 1 layer to multiply. I make the brush large and start applying a soft gradient to the hair. I set my brush hardness to the third square, Make the brush smaller and turn on the ending setting so it gets pointed at the end. I then make a whole bunch of strokes in the direction that the hair is flowing. I try to make the lines flow from the same point. I make the brush big and soft and add a little bit more soft shading. I set the brush to transparent and then erase in the middle of the hair. This will make the strokes I draw fade nicely into the hair. I use the opacity slider to slightly lower the opacity. The shading looked kind of dark and I wanted to lighten it up. Next I use the eyedropper tool to select the color shadow 2. I make a new layer above the other coloring layers, clip it to the layer below and then set it to multiply. I make the brush large and soft and then darken the shadows. I change my brush settings to like this, and then I start adding darker strokes to the hair. Thank you. 
I then set my brush to transparent to lighten the ends. Also for a lot of this I have my brush density set to around 50. Then I lower the opacity to lighten the shadows. I select my base layer and then create a new layer under my two shadow layers. I want to add some more soft shadows with color shadow 1. I try to remember that the light is coming from the right, so I try to keep a lot of the shading on the left. I then lower the opacity a little. Now I select my top shadow layer. I create a new layer, clip it to the layer below, and then set it to add glow. This will make it look bright and shiny. I select my highlight color with the eyedropper tool. I change my brush setting so that it has a harder edge and gets pointed at both sides. I also make it pretty small. Then I start adding strokes to the middle of the hair for the highlight. This will make the hair look shiny. I try my best to follow the shape of the hair. Because the light is coming from the right, I add less highlight strokes as I move to the left. I add some extra highlights at the top. Then I make my brush a little larger, softer, and set it to transparent to make the edges of the highlight fade a little. Then I lower the opacity to make the highlight not so powerful. I decided I didn't really like the base color I chose, so I select my base color layer and then click the Lock Transparent Pixel button. This makes it so I can't color outside the base color layer, so I can easily change the color. I kept trying different blues until I was satisfied. <laughs> I like this blue much more. Next I create a new layer over all of my other coloring layers, clip it to the layers below, and then select the color Bounce Light. I make the brush large and soft for a smooth highlight. I forgot to set my layer to add glow. It looks a lot less shiny if I don't do that. <laughs> bounce Light is when a light bounces off an object and onto something else. I often like to add Bounce Light and make it a different color because I think it looks cool. Next I select my highlight color and add a soft highlight to the right side. Then I lower the opacity to make the highlight less bright. Before I end this video, I want to say thank you so much to my patrons including Rachel, Bonnie, Cash Money Matt, Julie, Tamalam, Pisatera, Anne, Magic Gamer Dad, Eduardo, AJ, Stephanie, Nari-chan, and Daniel. Thank you so much for being a patron and for your support. Well, thank you all so much for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed it and I'll see you all next week in my next video. Bye!